I waited patiently for Jehovah. And he inclined unto me. And heard me cry, heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit. And he set my foot upon a rock. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. <clears throat> Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. You may be seated. They shall run and not faint. When thou passest to the waters, I will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shall not be burned neither shall the flames kindle upon thee I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which made the heavens and the earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand.
We are here this this afternoon, Thursday, March the 21st, 2020, for at one o'clock in the afternoon, celebrating the life of Mrs. Thelma McDaniel Hunter. Sunrise in 1947, sunset 314, 2024. At this time, we'll have a selection, and then we have our scripture reading coming from Reverend Catherine Moore, the Old and the New Testament. Amen. Then I'll come back with prayer.
God be the glory. Our Old Testament scripture is coming from the 46th Psalm. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. That's the Old Testament reading for today. The New Testament scripture is coming from the 21st chapter of Revelation. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Yes, yes. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. God bless you to my family. I want to say that God is not going to allow you to uh, uh, be, put any more on you than, than you can bear. So just trust in God. Yes. Trust in God because he never fails. He has promised to be with you always, even until the end of the world. Yes, yes. God bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come at this appointed time of this day, lifting up this family before you, Lord God. Dear God, we ask that you comfort their hearts, Lord God, that you give them a peace, Lord God, that only you can give, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Dear God, we know that you've already promised us that you will be a mother for the motherless. And dear God, we come this evening believing, Lord God, that you will just be that mother for this family, for the son, Lord God. And dear God, you said that you, you would comfort our hearts. We ask that you comfort them with the comfort, Lord God, that only you can give. And dear God, we just ask that you just give them in the days and the weeks coming ahead, Lord God. When the nights get long and lonely and when the memories are there, Lord God. We ask that you would just comfort their, their hearts and give them that peace and just have them to know that everything is all right. Dear God, we just know that, that, that you are you you are our keeper you are our protector you are the one that helps us in times like these when our hearts are hurting lord god we can come to you lord god when we can't talk to nobody else lord god god you said that we could cast all our cares on you because you care for us and dear god we just thank you lord for being our great god 
You are great and a mighty God. There's none like you, Lord God. And we just praise you. We just thank you, Lord, for being here for us. And dear God, we know you're here with us right now. Oh God, in just comfort, touch the hearts, Lord God, of your people. And we just thank you for doing it. We praise you for it. And we pray in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. And we be, amen. At this time, we'll have the acknowledgments coming from the Martian staff and uh, Martian staff. <laughs> and then we have a selection, and then we have our words of comfort coming from Reverend Tony Cunningham. Amen. <clears throat> Weep not for me. Weep not for me, though I have gone into that gentle night. Grieve if you will, but not for long. Upon my soul's sweet flight, I am at peace, my soul's at rest. There is no need for tears, for with your love, I was so blessed for all those many years. There is no pain, I suffer not. The fear is now all gone. Put now these things out of your thoughts. In your memory, I live on. Remember not my fight for breath. Remember not the strife. Please do not dwell upon my death, but celebrate my life. The acknowledgement. At times like this, when sorrow invades the heart and home, it means so much to have love and family and friends. Thank you so much. Thank you for each kind expression of sympathy, which will always be remembered. May God keep each of you, the family. Thank you. I will trust you, Lord, how I love you so much. Though my nights may seem long and I feel so alone, Lord, my trust is in you. I surrender to you so many painful thoughts travel through my mind and I wonder how I'm gonna make it through this time but I'll trust you Lord it's not easy sometimes the pain in my life makes you seem far away but I'll trust you I need to know you're here. Through the tears and the pain, through the heartache and rain, I'll trust you. I'll trust you. Everything that I see tells me not to believe, but I'll trust you, Lord. You have never failed me. My past controls me. Will this hurt ever leave? I can only trust you. No one else like you. So many thoughts travel through my mind and I wonder how I'm gonna make it through this time but I'll trust you Lord it's not easy sometimes the pain in my life makes you seem far away but I'll trust you I need you're Through the tears and the pain Through the heartache and rain I trust you Lord, I'll trust you 
can trust you. I can trust you. I can trust you. Son will come with a horn. Hey, how's everybody doing? Amen. I know the answer to that already. The question is how I'm doing. Amen. I'm great. Um, I'm just thankful for uh, staying with our uh, staff for what they did for my mom. Uh, great job. Uh, my mother was a sweet lady. I love her to death. Okay. Um, this is the name of a poem called uh, We Had a Wonderful Mother. Just give me a second. We had a wonderful mother, one who never really grew old. Her smile was made of sunshine and her heart was solid gold. Her eyes were bright as shining stars and in her cheeks, fair roses you see. We had a wonderful mother and that's the way it will always be. But take heed because she still is keeping an eye on all of us. So let's make sure she will like what she sees. Um, I wanna thank all of you who came out here today. It means so much. This is a rejoice day. The tears are coming from, I'm happy. Cause I know she's not suffering. I know she's not in any pain. And it was just her time. But um, I just can't even put in the words like how, um, how much I loved her. She was just a sweet little lady. They say her heart was weak scientifically, but she had a big heart. Um, I just can't even put it into words just how much I love my mother. But um, I want to thank everybody that came out and that came together for this, who uh, stood up. Veronica, Terry, all of you, family, Sharon, Matthew, I love you all. Irvin, Lacey, everybody, Chris, I see all of y'all. I love y'all. Thank you for coming through for this day. And um, it's going to be a rejoice day. Thank you. Pastor Cunningham has asked me to do that first verse again. Yes, yes. Even though I can see and I can feel your touch, I will trust you, Lord. How I love you so much, though my nights may seem long, and 
and I feel so alone. My trust is in you. I surrender to you. So many painful thoughts travel through my mind. And I wonder how I'm going to make it through this time. But I'll trust. I'll trust you, Lord. Even when it, even when I feel I can't feel you, nor can I see you, Lord, I'll trust you. Because it was you who guided me through seen and unseen dangers. It is you who is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher. I'll trust you even behind the hurt, yes. even behind the tears and the yes. pain. Yes, sir. I'll trust you yes, Lord. even in the midst of heartache yes, because I know if anybody, if anybody can remove this hurt and this pain, Lord, it's got to be you. Right. And I'm going to trust you and I'm going to praise you and I'm going to keep on loving you because you first loved me. Lord, Father God, I thank you. Oh, Lord, our Father God, we come this afternoon not to say goodbye for some and not to say we'll see you later to others, but to your child whom you saw fit to call home. Lord, we say we'll see you later for those of us who know you as our personal Savior. And for those who don't know you, Lord, Father God, this can be a day to say, Lord, I'll trust you. I commit my life to you. Lord, I just ask you to forgive me of my sins and my transgressions and make me new again, Lord, Father God. But right now, Lord, we need your strength for this family. As a very important change in their family circle has been broken. But Lord, Father God, you said in your word, you said in your word yes. that you would be a mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless. You even said that you will stick closer than a brother. And Lord, Father God, we know, you, we know that you are a God that cannot and will not lie. That's why even as the storm passes over, Lord, Father God, we're going to trust you. Lord, Father God, we trusted you before the storm came. Now we're in the midst of the storm, we're still going to trust you. And even when the storm passes, we're going to trust you even more because we know that you are a way maker and a burden bearer. Lord, Father God, even though it don't feel good, this is the day that you have made. This is the day that you have made. And behind the tears, we're still going to rejoice and be glad in it because we realize that it could have and should have been me. But it's only because of your mercy and your grace. For it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And we give thanks and glory and honor. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we are here to celebrate the life of Sister Thelma Hunter. And just the other day, I, I had the opportunity to go by Chris and Al meet your house. And uh, they need our prayers. Because I think a little bit over a month ago by this time, we were in the same seats once before buried Almetra's mother. But what a lot of people don't know is that both of their parents lived with them. They were their caregivers. So now, you know, not only buried a second mom, we've already buried one mom. And here we are again. But even in the midst, Chris, you trust him. But the thing that was so intriguing to me is that I was talking to Brother Stanley and I said, I need to go by and see the family. And at the same time, the family want to see me. <laughs> Won't God do it? And we get there, and I begin to have a conversation with him. And the expressions and the way he spoke of his mother. He spoke of a young man who loved his mama. Mm -hmm. And then he got on the phone, and he called his, called his Aunt Sharon. And the way she spoke of her sister-in-law, 
And she said, she wasn't my sister-in-law. She was my sister. She said, I love me some them. And I said, well, just tell me a few things about them. And the list went on and on. Till I said, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm have to work this thing out. Because it was everlasting. It was one thing out of enough. And there was not a, uh, a tear in the house. But I had to, I had to re remind Chris that sign is sometime at some point in your life, you're going to have to grieve. You can't walk around and hold all this in because, man, it will drive you completely crazy. Amen. And grieving is, grieving is a part of a process of getting better. It does not represent weakness. It represents your strength. That you know what? I can't carry this by myself. And when you're down, you always got to look up. Look up to the hills with coming to help. And all of your help comes from the Lord. And I just want to say that because in John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6, the Bible says, uh, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Yes, sir. For in my father's house are many mansions. Yes. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye shall be also. Yeah. And my brothers and my sisters, just for a little while, I'm going to speak on the subject that I've made it home. <laughs> I've, I've made it home. I've made it home. And, and, I'm, and I'm only talking about uh, Sister Thelma right now. Because everyone knows that there was a certain routine that Thelma liked to do every morning. You know, she liked to get up in the morning and get that pot brewing with that folks coffee. And then as she's as she as she's uh drinking that coffee, she may have a cigarette or two. Don't look at me like that. We done did some things. But God is good, God. Amen. But one thing Chris made sure that I knew, he said, Tony, you know me like that. He said, my mama was saved. I said, well, Chris, you know what? There ain't much more I got to say. Because she's, she made it home. And I asked him, I said, well, tell me during that time, tell me about her day, her, her final day. He said, well, she got up doing her regular routine. And then she went by the back door, that's where her bedroom's at, as she wait for the van to take her to the adult center. And that's the place where she would go and meet with all of her friends. And they would sit there and laugh and talk and play one of her favorite games, a little bit of bingo. <laughs> and then if, if, if she's lucky enough, because she may find two or three in there that they know how to play some spades or two. And then she may talk to them a little bit about basketball and, 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 and Santa's how where she graduated from. Well, at the end of the day, she would get up from the table and folks would look at her and say, Thelma, where you, where you going? She looked back and I believe Thelma told him, she said, well, I'm on my way home. <laughs> they said, well, but the van hasn't got here yet. She said, but I know sooner or later it's going to pull up and take me back to my home. You see, home is a place of refuge. Home is a safe place. Home is a place where there is comfort, there is love, there is understanding, there is peace in the home. But let me tell you about Miss Thelma's home. See, Miss Thelma's home has not always been like that because trials and tribulations showed up in the midst of her life. What are you talking about, Cunningham? I'm glad you asked. See, Chris reminded me that there was a time when Mama had me, Daddy, and my brother. We were separated for a while. But mama didn't give up on life what she went and did she went and got herself together picked herself up and prepared a place for us so that when we was to rejoice back we would have a place to go somewhere and call home that's the kind of mama that I had she said that even though I made some mistakes my mama always put her loving arms around me and told me that everything was gonna be alright that's the kind of home that I remember my mama gave me a safe place my mama took care of me and folks around 
She say she didn't say a whole lot. She didn't say a whole lot, but you can be, you can just feel her presence. You may see her sitting back at a cookout where the family's coming together and all she's doing is looking around and smiling. And then again, you may find her somewhere, somewhere in the mall shopping, dressing herself up from the floor, from the toe up to the floor up. Then she may have on a little bit of jerry. See, my mom was a classy woman, but my mama loved home. And she wanted anybody to come in her presence to know that she knew the Lord. Because she gonna tell somebody every now and then, if it wasn't for the Lord who was on my side, tell me where would I be? I could have been dead a long time ago. But grace and mercy, it kept me. Even while I was going through my disease, God kept me. And I kept praising him. That's why I didn't give up. And when I left the house, I was always looking, looking forward to getting back home. But the Bible tell me, the Bible said that, that God said, I go and prepare a place for you. So that lets me know that this old earth, this old world is not my home. I'm just a journeyman passing through. But I can remember on the last day as me and Chris spoke, he said, well, you know, mama going through her routine. Well, now the van done pulled up at the adult center. Can't you see Thelma telling, all, telling goodbye to all her friends? I may see you tomorrow. Goodbye, world. I may see you tomorrow. Can't you see Thelma as she walked? To the van, her and the van driver, and everybody on the van laughing and talking, sharing memories. And then they pulled up in front of the house, and Thelma looked at the driver and she said, I made it home. Thank you, I made it home. If I don't see you no more, I made it home. They tell me that Thelma got off the van, began to walk to the door, but as she got, as she got to her room, though, God decided to call her home. Chris was wondering what is going on on the outside because mama should have been on the inside right about now. But what he did not know was that this, this world was not her home. She just had a house on this side of the Jordan. But God had a place for a prepared person. And they tell me that she joined the White Plains Baptist Church a long time ago. She gave her life to Christ. So she knew that this world was not a home because the Bible says, He said, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go and prepare a place for you. He said, and If I go prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. But He didn't say where and He surely didn't say when. So it behooves all of us to get our houses in order because the same train, oh, the same train, the same train that came and picked up them is going to come back and pick up you and I. But one thing for sure and two things for certain. Heaven, she decided to make heaven her home. But where will be your home? Where will be your home? She's in a place where there'll be weeping no more. No more crying. No more pain. No more being talked about being beauty scorn. Family, we all got to leave here one day. And today could be our day. But if you haven't decided to give your life to Christ, I would encourage you to do it and do it now. Because it's already late in the evening and the sun has already gone down. Thelma could, could speak right now. And you asked her, well, Thelma, when you got up, did you plan on this being your last day? And she'll probably tell you, no, because. I got Sharon back there. I got Chris and Almeja. I got my whole family, Terry, Ron. And I enjoy seeing them. Or just being on the phone talking to them. No, no, I wouldn't expect it. She said, but since I made it home, 
I wouldn't have it no other way. I wouldn't have it no other way. And I believe Sharon would say something to the family like this. Weep not for me. Though I have gone into that gentle night. Grieve if you will. But not for long upon my soul sweet flight. I'm at a peace. My soul's at rest. There is no need for tears. For with your love, I was so blessed. For all those many years, there is no pain. I suffer not. The fear is now all gone. Put now these things out of your thoughts and your memories. I live on. Remember not my fight for breath. Remember not the strife. Please do not dwell upon my death, but celebrate my life. Celebrate my life. Sister Thelma lived a good life. God said, I promise you three score and ten. That's 70 years. She got 70 and then some. She lived a good life. And it would be selfish to us to not go out, to not want God to have his way. But I just want to remind you that anything belongs to him. And she did. He has the right to come back what belongs to him whenever he see fit. So just in case, I don't know, just in case, you haven't made, you haven't made it right with him. Saying, well, you know, uh, I'm going to wait till I do this and I do that. I'm going to wait till I change the way you'll never get it right. For the Bible says that all have sinned. Not y'all, but all have sinned. Amen. And he also said, Paul said, I have to die daily. In other words, I got to ask God every day to forgive me of something. Whether I'm sinning knowingly or unknowingly. But one thing about the God we serve, he can do it. He can clean you up. Take all your wrongs and throw them into the sea of forgiveness. Forgetfulness. And never to bring them up to you again. Now you can't you can't expect Cunningham to do that. Because you may get on my bad side. I then I have to tell you, well, I remember when. It's not the God who we serve. God is forgiving God. And that's Reverend Caldwell's song. I'll trust him. Even through this process, I'll trust him. I want him to be my Alpha, my Omega. I'll trust him. To be my Savior, I'll trust him. And when my eyes are closed, like Sister Thelma, and the blood is no longer running in my veins, I want to hear him say, well done. Well done. Well done. Let us pray. Reverend Carwell. Lord, I thank you. There's one thing I thank you for, God. Yes, Lord. Trouble and struggle and death and sorrow and bereavement are not victorious over the life of a believer. Yes, yes. And God, I thank you today that as this family grieves, let the tears flow and let it pour out. Because death is a friend, a gateway to the life of the believer in Christ. Yes, son. That to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And God, we thank you that it's not a goodbye like we're not going to see you again. Yes, yes. 
But if we live according to your word and receive you as our Lord and Savior, we'll meet again. So we'll say, see you later. See you later. We won't say bye-bye, but we'll say, see you later. Because in that great getting up morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain, shall be caught up to meet him in the air we will see one another again so god help us to treat one another yes like there is a judgment yes sir help us to say things about one another as if there's a god in the room listening to what's coming out of our mouths help us god to do things to each other under the notice that we shall be rewarded for everything that we do in this body. My Lord. Now, God, lay your hand on this family. Give them peace and comfort. I know you will. I know you're able because you did it for me. God, be their joy in the midst of this sorrow. Let them know some days, God, they're going to be all right with it. And some yes, days they're yes. going to fall apart. But that's the, process that's the process of grief and loss. That is normal. Just let it flow. Let it flow. Put their mind on a life well lived. My Lord. And that soon and very soon all of us will be together again. Thank you, God, for the man of God that have given us his word. Let us carry this word. Thank you, God, for the morticians and their families serving families in grief and loss. Bless them, God. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are going to give the benediction at the graveside. Amen. And we ask that who all that will be traveling with the family down to the white place. Please put your head like that. Amen. What shall I do?